Hello everyone, myself Sunil Pawar welcomes you back for the new video session of 12th class biology. As you know that we already concluded three sessions for this chapter number six and today we are going to conclude our sixth chapter with this two, one of the most important topics of this chapter that is the human genome project, we call it the mega project that is the HGP. And second, one more very important phenomenon that is called as DNA fingerprinting. Okay, I think so. You all aware of uh, fingerprinting? Clear. You heard so many times that the thieves were caught by the police because of matching of the fingerprints. Okay, as you know that on the tip of these fingers we are having a special characteristic sign. Okay which is not resemble with the others and it is identical for that particular person. Similarly, when we talk about the genetical material that is the DNA. Okay, so when we talk about the specific sequences of the nucleotide in this, in this uh, polynucleotidal thread, no? then it is specific for that particular person. Okay, so from this one thing, we used to identify this uh, genetic track or tract with the help of this specific sequencing we will discuss in this one DNA fingerprinting and the particular sequencing and the arrangement of this all nitrogenous basis of a particular genome we will discuss in this human genome project okay so first of all we are going to discuss this human genome project HGP in short we can call it clear the genetic makeup of an organism lies in its DNA sequences and if any two individuals differ from each other then they should also be different in their DNA at least at some places okay it is said that nearly this DNA sequencing is 99.99% similar in all the persons okay but this 0.01% will make a great difference between the two persons okay so you know that for the expression of a particular trait a particular gene is responsible okay and this gene is uh, composed in the form of the specific series of the nitrogenous bases in the in the nucleotides okay so if the two persons are different in nature surely their genetic material will be different okay now so this assumption led to idea of determining the complete dna sequence of human genome and uh, consequently of human genome project okay you know that what is the genome genome is nothing special it is actually a gene pool you can say that it is a collection of total number of genes which is responsible to decide all the characteristic feature of a particular species that is called as genome again I am repeating it is nothing special it is just a collection of total number of genes which is responsible to decide all the specific characteristics of a particular species that is called as genome or in single word or in the simple word you can say that the total number of genes which is present in a haploid set of chromosome is also called as genome so remember this genome is responsible to decide a particular uh, characteristics of a species so similarly if we talk about the uh, genome project then it is nothing special this genome project is just a try which made by the scientists to just identify the specific series of this nucleotide we call it the genome sequencing okay then this nucleotidal sequences in a specific manner okay so a joint venture which was coordinated by the US Department of Energy and National Institute of Health that is NIH and later it was joined by the welcome trust of the united uh, kingdom okay so now it is launched in 1990 and completed in 2003 okay so it was a mega project which took 13 years for completion then you can see that how much time was taken by the scientists to complete this project it was nearly 13 years okay so it was such a huge project clear and this project worked toward the determination of complete DNA sequences of human beings. We are not talking about a single gene. We are not talking about a single chromosome. Here we are talking about all the 23 chromosome of a person. Okay. And the total number of uh, 
genes and the total nucleotides of the gene which is sequencing in a specific manner we are just considering as this HGP okay so the human genome uh, as we discussed that what is this genome it contains nearly 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pair see that what a huge number of this nucleotides clear so it consisting nearly 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs and if the obtained sequences were to be stored in the type form in a book just this example is given to think about the huge or the vastness of this project clear what happened if suppose that whatever the sequences is present in the type form in the book okay and each page of the book contain thousand letter okay and each book contain thousand pages then 3300 such books would be required to store the information of DNA sequences from a single human cell okay it is just uh, beyond the uh, comparison okay okay in this one we can see that uh, what, what what a vast information is actually calculated and uh, confirm in this one thing clear so now <coughs> to solve this problem uh, huge uh, problem high speed uh, computational devices which were used uh, in this one thing and we call this branch especially that is the bioinformatics okay so what is the bioinformatics it is actually a computer based digitalized okay branch who is responsible to match and uh, store this information okay and the two main factors that contributed into the completion of this projects are first one that is availability of simple and fast techniques for the determination of the dns sequences this is the most important one okay and second the genetic engineering techniques which helps to isolate and clone any segment of DNA. We know that. What is the genetic engineering? It is a branch of biology which deals with the genetic material. Okay, its manipulation, its magnification, its amplification, its copying and its changes. That is the uh, genetic engineering. So, it is also involved in this one thing. Okay, now. So, here we are going to discuss the uh, goals of the HGP clear so some of the important goals which we are discussing here just to identify all the approximately 20,000 to 25,000 gene a human DNA clear uh, we know that near about 30,000 genes are present on a chromosome clear in total chromosome and determine the sequence of the 3 billion chemical base pair that make up human DNA okay and also we want to know about the arrangement of this 3 billion chemical base pairs okay who is going to describe the nature of the human genome okay then store this information in databases in digital format not only not knowing about this one thing but this data should be stored in a proper manner clear and then to improve the tools for the data analysis see that this huge data is need to access very easily okay so for this one thing the proper tools we needed for this data analysis clear and the transfer related uh, technologies to other sectors such as industries we know that uh, so many medical industries not only medical industries but other industries which is responsible for the betterment of the mankind okay those who are working with the human species they also need to provide this information not only this one thing even the forensic sciences and other cases also we needed this one clear then address the ethical legal and social issue issues we call it the ELSILC clear which one thing that is the ethical legal and social issues okay that may arise from the project okay it should not be heard it should be maintained properly clear so genome of many non-human models such as bacteria yeast drosophila plants just like the rice and, and uh, Arabid arabidopsis have also been uh, sequenced and it can help in learning about the dna sequences of non-human organism that can lead to the lead and understanding of their natural capabilities okay along with the human genome project project this rice project is also learn okay it was also very well defined and calculated there 
so the knowledge about effects of the dna variations among individuals can lead to discovery of new ways in uh, diagnosis treatment and prevention of various diseases affecting mankind so this is the most important reason behind working the human genome because it is not only a study but it will helpful for providing the uh, a proper assistance for the diagnosis and after diagnosis treating that diseases and also preventing so many diseases from the different kind of uh causes okay now so how can we find out it so here is the methodology is used okay so first of all two methods that is the identif identifying ests okay what is this ests express sequence tags okay what is this the expressed sequence tags okay and sequence annotation the arrangement and the presentation of this one thing clear and so this is ests as the name suggested this refer to the part of dna that is expressed that means the transcribed as mrna and translated into proteins thereafter it basically focus on sequencing the part denoting a gene so remember this the especially what is the impact and the reason behind this ests what is the second one that is the annotation what is the annotation in this approach actually the entire genome what is the meaning coding and non coding you know that uh, in this genetic material two type of nitrogenous bases of the grouping of nitrogenous bases are there one who is responsible for coded that particular amino acid and seven e second even it is present there but it is not coded for any information so during the trans uh, transcription this part is not transcribed in the form of the mrna okay so is sequenced and later on function is assigned to each region in the genome okay so remember this basic fact about this one now so what is the genome sequencing here we are going to discuss this fact the dna from the cells is isolated and is randomly broke into the fragments of small sizes okay how we can perform this one thing so first of all by the centrifugation and this process this by the lysis of the outer membrane this um, dna is isolated and then later on it randomly divided into small fragments okay now these fragments are cloned into the suitable host using vectors okay by using that particular vector it may be lambda phase virus okay it may be plasmid or it may be phasmids okay so it used to carry and just by recombinant dna technology we can uh, insert them in a uh, bacterial dna and later we can make its copies okay now then this clone fragments amplifying in the host and amplification facilitates an easy sequencing clear amplification means their imposement and their a proper uh, procedure clear now the common vectors used okay which one thing that is the bac bacterial artificial chromosome which we made by knowing their uh, features okay and yak that is the yeast artificial chromosome so these are the two vectors which basically we use here instead of this plasmid phasmids and that um, um, lambda phase virus okay and the common host that is the bacteria and the yeast for their multiplication then automated sequences okay are used to sequence this smaller fragments okay it is called as the sanger sequencing because it was given by this scientist okay the sequences so obtained are arranged based on overlapping region within them okay so this is called as the alignment which is actually arranged there only clear then this alignment of the sequences is also done automatically by computer programs here no need to make the human effort because we already developed such kind of softwares and this one which is responsible for correcting this one thing okay then these sequences are annotated and assigned to each chromosome and the sequences of chromosomes first was completed in may 2006 okay now then second there is a genetic and physical maps on genome so this is the gen genome sequencing it is nothing is special just by breaking the chromosome into small fragments later on by using the vectors we are making the copies and by making the copies we learn 
the arrangement and the alignment of this nitrogenous bases in a specific particular order that is called the genome sequencing clear so this was generated using information on polymorphism of restriction endonucleases recognition sites okay and some repetitive dna sequences known as micro satellites clear so you know that the polymorphism of the restricted nuclear uh, uh, endonucleases and then polymorphism means what there are particular phases in the or the parts in the uh, dna okay in which part this specific sites are varying from one human beings to next human beings okay so that's why this part is called as polymorphic parts and simply this phenomenon is named as polymorphism okay now then here we are going to discuss the saline features of the human genome project clear when we observe them then what is this one the human genome contains nearly 3164.7 million nucleotide bases okay next one thing the average gene consists of 3000 bases and the largest known human gene is uh, dystrophin okay it consists nearly 2.4 million bases just think about it the total number of genes is estimated at 30000 okay and almost all 99.9% of the nucleotide bases are exactly same in human every human individual okay now so the functions are unknown for over 50% of the discovered genes okay we are even uh, today not don't know about the proper functioning of nearly 50% of the genes which is present in our genome less than 2% of the genome codes for protein that means out of 100% only 2% or even less than 2% genes are used to code it for the protein okay now and the repeated sequences make up a very large portion of the human genome okay then the repetitive sequences that are repeated by many times though uh, thought to have no direct coding functions but they shed light on the chromosome structure dynamics and evolution clear so this repetitive sequences which are present there but they are not responsible for performing any uh, translation or any coding or not any formation of the protein clear but it is quite compulsory for the structure of that particular gene or that particular chromosome right then chromosome 1 has most genes that is nearly about 2968 and the y chromosome has the fewest that is the 231 gene that means the first chromosome is the biggest one and the y chromosome is the shortest one clear now then the scientists have identified about 1.4 million locations where single base dna differences okay it is called as SNPs okay there is a single nucleotide polymorphism we already discussed that what is the polymorphism in dna okay and occurs in human being so this information is helpful in finding chromosomal location for disease associated sequences and tracing the human history as you know that the mutations occur because of changes in the uh, point mutation okay or the point nitrogenous base pairs okay so this diseases can be identified and treated well with the help of this one thing now fine uh, here we are going to discuss the next fact that is the application of the hgp what is the purpose and use of this one thing okay so its knowledge is helpful in research involving biological systems including human biology so the whatever the uh, research is which made on the human being can be studied with the help of this one okay and with the whole genome sequences and newer technologies we can be a uh, systematic in a uh, approach to various medical questions okay on a broader scale okay so it is very helpful for diagnosing assisting and answering the question which is related with the uh, malfunctioning of the genome and the genetic nature okay and all these genes in a genome that is all the transcripts in a particular tissue or organ or tumors can be studied so by knowing the proper sequences we can learn about the uh, misbehavior or the uh, abnormal behavior of this uh, 
genes or the particular chromosomal part okay now this rice or is a sativa is one of the most important crop in the world and the rice genome is well mapped and it is the smallest of the major cereals crop genome it consisting only 400 to 430 mb so one more project that is the rice genome project is also made by the scientists and they were finally used to conclude all the features about this one thing okay so this is all about the uh, human genome project now you are going to discuss the second part of this uh, discussion that is the dna fingerprinting clear so what is dna fingerprinting is a very quick method employed to compare the dna sequences of any two individuals clear when we want to compare the genetic material or the dna sequences of any two persons then this method which method dna fingerprinting has to apply clear and of the total base sequences present in humans nearly 99.9% .9 in all human beings are identical and the remaining 0.1% differs from person to person and makes very individual every individual unique in nature so by tracing them by identifying them we can make a proper uh, facts about it okay so it is a it is a really difficult and time consuming task to sequence and compare all 3 into 10 to the power 9 bases in two individuals okay so instead of considering the entire genome certain specific reasons called the repetitive dna sequences are used for comparative study that means whenever we are considering the two different uh, genetic material or dna strand then no need to learn about all the nucleotide of that sequence only which one thing that is the repetitive okay sequences are used for their comparison okay now so here what is the basics of the dna fingerprinting so we can learn that in a density gradient centrifugation of bulk genomic dna most of the dna formed a major peak okay and but the rest of the dna form a smaller peak called the satellite because it is quite different and located far away from this one thing clear so the satellite dna can be categorized as mini or micro depending on the following facts one that is the best composition that is the uh, ratio of the a and t and g and c which one is much richer in nature okay and the length of the segment what is the size of the dna segment and the number of repetitive units it is the most important thing basically this is the third point is the most important to identify the satellite portion of this one thing okay so this sequences do not code for any protein remember this repetitive uh, portion of this dna and the polymorphism is variation at the genetic level that arises due to the mutation and it arises due to the mutation and it plays an important role in evolution and speciation you know very well that the gradual changes which we observe in the generation by generation in a particular species which is responsible to bring forward the new character who is responsible for evolution and the origin of a new species clear now this satellite dna shows the higher degree of the polymorphism and form the basis of dna fingerprinting right so as the polymorphism are inheritable from parents to children this dna fingerprinting is the basis of parenting uh, paternity testing in case of disputes okay so when we want to identify the right parents okay so this uh, a paternity can be uh, tested with the help of this dna fingerprinting okay so this polymorphism arises normally in the non coding sequences because the mutation in non coding sequences does not affect an individual reproductive ability because this non coding portion of the dna is not responsible for any characteristic features okay now we are moving for that the techniques for the dna fingerprinting so first the technique was developed by the alice jeffries okay and he used a satellite dna as probe probe one who carry okay and the variable number of the tandem repeats it is in short called as the vntr okay is a type of satellite dna that shows a higher degree of the polymorphism so by using this one thing we can identify 
the techniques involve the southern blot hybridizing use uh, radio label VNTR as a probe by which we can identify and we can uh, easily show them okay the various steps which we involve here that is the first of all isolation of the DNA as you know that this DNA is extracted from the cell as a high speed centrifugation okay then the amplification the many copies of this extracted DNA can be made by use of the uh, polymerase chain reaction as well as by using the vectors okay then the digestion of the DNA with the help of the restriction endonuclease is enzyme to cut them and make their fragments then separation the digestion with the restriction endonuclease, endonuclease enzyme create the DNA fragments which are then separated by the gel electrophoresis okay it is the important one by which we can separate this small randomly arranged pieces of the DNA okay where on the gel by the process of electrophoresis okay then this southern bl blotting technique this separated DNA fragments now blotted onto the synthetic membrane such as the nitrocellulose or what we, uh, we can also use this nylon films to obtain this DNA segments clear then the immobilized fragments are hybridized okay with a VNTR probe you know that hybridization the mixing of the two different DNA okay and uh, it is only obtained to identify and uh, or to study the different sp special features of this DNA clear then the detection of the hybridized DNA fragment by auto radiography and this show the many dark bands of the different sizes okay now we use to label them with the help of this radioactive material which is helpful to uh, obtain the uh, specific bands on the uh, film okay then this VNTRs vary in size from 0.1 to 20 kb and this auto radiograms after hybridization with VNTR probe give many bands of the different sizes okay and these bands give a characteristic pattern for an individual DNA which is used to identify match copy or to um, overlap the other one okay and they are different in each individual except identical twins because this identical twins develop from the same zygote so that's why there is no possibility of varying from each other now finally we are going to discuss the application so the test of paternity help in uh, settle the paternity disputes as I told you if uh, the identity of the parents is not confirmed then this DNA fingerprinting is a, a very well defined tool to identify them okay so notifications of the uh, criminals it is also used as a tool in the forensic investigations at the from the uh, crime site okay by taking the uh, small pieces of skin or the blood or the parts of the body or the uh, hairs we can take this DNA and uh, uh, find out the culprits of that uh, crime okay the population diversity determination it is also helpful to know about the variations clear and the determination of the genetic diversity okay this whole process can be summarized with the help of this diagram clear so if you observe that this is the blood sample is taken from the person okay and then later on this DNA is extracted from the blood cell how just by dissolving the nuclear membrane and by using this very high speed centrifuge machine we separated this genetic material okay now this fragmentation is there it is used to cut in the form of small fragments by using the restriction nucleases enzyme it is the endonucleases as well as the exonucleases enzyme clear then this DNA fragments are then separated okay by using this electrophoresis on the agarose gel that agar agar solution is used to obtain this one thing clear then this DNA band pattern is specifically obtained by using this southern blotting technique by keeping this layer by layer on each other clear then uh, later on this DNA probes are used to find out the specific DNA sequences on the membrane and this, which one thing that is the separate or, or washed of this specific DNA parts clear and finally this uh, uh, which one thing radioactively probes 
this bands okay then finally this dna patterns is obtained on this membrane it is used uh, because it is uh, ra radiation in, uh, it is uh, emitting out the radiations okay and it is radioable in nature so it finally obtained by placing that x-ray films along with it for a long period of time we can obtain this one thing okay so this all about today's session in which we learn and discuss keep learning keep reading thank you very much